Hello and welcome to a new Royal Reviewer video. In today's video, I want to talk about a recent poll that has been conducted for a UK national newspaper online, online and in physical print. So I've got some stats to talk about. And it just, I was thinking about this. Sometimes I, I read Royal News and then I sort of mull it over and think about it during the day. And this was one of those things. So it was a poll on behalf of the Mail Online by Delta Poll interviewed 2009 British adults online between the 1st and 4th of September 2023. So it's a fairly large poll. I mean, it's a, it's a sample size considering that the UK has a po population of probably 60 something million. Uh, so 2000 is a kind of, you know, a sample snapshot we don't know the demographic areas where these people came from, whether it's just in general, but we do know that it is recent, which is which is good. Um, so one of the things that came up during this poll, you know, apart from just the general popularity of the monarchy, which is in good favour, I have to say, but one of the more things that got me thinking, people don't really understand that we have what a constitutional hereditary, hereditary monarchy is and what it means for the UK in general, uh, because some of the stats that came out were just a little bit odd, to say the least. People were basically contradicting themselves. Um, so one of the things that struck me was 61% of those questions suggested the Duke of Sussex, Prince Harry, should be removed from the line of succession, while 57% thought Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie, Prince Andrew's daughters, should also be taken from the list. Right. This is where, for me, it, it just loses me entirely. So with a constitutional hereditary monarchy, what does that mean? Let's talk about, first of all, what that actually means for the United Kingdom. So gone are the days uh, when, you know, a monarch has absolute power. That has been long gone. I mean, that was the, 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 the very, very first kind of culling of that absolute power began with Magna Carta, which is I suppose Britain's only real. When we talk about um, you know a constitution, we don't actually have a written down one. Magna Carta is kind of the only version that we have, and that was basically to put a limit uh, on the monarch's absolute power and um, and involve Parliament in some in some decisions. So fast forward all those years uh, post Magna Carta, and we are in a situation where. We have we don't have an elected head of state. The monarch is the head of state, uh, but they are there. Their presence is enshrined in law constitutionally. They do still have residual powers that they could um, sort of they could use if they wanted to, but they don't because it would cause absolute chaos um, and it would it would mean it would put the monarchy in a, in, in question basically. So. All of the power pretty much lies with Parliament. They are the ones that are voted by the people. Um, they do all the general running of the country. The monarch is the figurehead. The monarch rubber stamps laws uh, that have been cr uh, created and made and passed through Parliament into law. Um, and of course, there, there are other roles such as being head of the armed forces and of course, head of religious services, for example, the Church of England. So that, that is the kind of the constitutional part. The hereditary part is the continuity. We know full well, you know, who the next monarch is likely to be going down generations. You know, we know next it's going to be Prince William. We know then it's likely to be Prince George. We then know that it's likely to be, who, if Prince George has any offspring, it will be them and their families and so on and so on. If some, for example, someone passes away unexpectedly or um, someone in that line doesn't have um, a child of their own, then it goes back up the line and then we know where it goes next. So it's all very kind of planned out. And that is one of the benefits of a hereditary monarchy is the continuity. Um, but what we're seeing from the likes of these polls is almost as if people had a choice uh, in in whether or not they should be in the line of succession based on popularity. And that's where I have you know, a hu huge issue with, because if you start voting people in or out based on popularity, 
it basically turns into Big Brother or one of those other kind of popularity contest reality shows, which is not what a monarchy should be based on. If you start doing that, then you may as well have a presidential system. You may as well get rid of the monarchy because it ceases to be what's there. So a monarchist, a true monarchist, should actually be defending the line of succession, even if it's somebody that you would rather not be there. And, you know, would I, thinking about if there was some kind of catastrophic event and, you know, all of the Waleses were kind of wiped out um, and the crown fell to Prince Harry and Meghan and their children, would I particularly be happy with that? No, I wouldn't really want a King Harry and a Queen Meghan at this point in time, um, based on what they've done in recent years, of course. Uh, so no, I would not. But it's continuity. We would know what would happen, uh, whether or not we wanted it to or not. I mean, it would take a devastating, catastrophic event for that to happen. Um, but I just don't think it's right to be excluding and voting people in or out based on popularity. Would I want a, you know, a King Andrew? No, I would not want a King Andrew. Um, but do I think Princess Beatrice and Eugenie should be excluded just based on, on who they are related to? No, I think actually Andrew and Sarah have done really well in bringing up two very well-adjusted young ladies who actually could be very good monarchs if, if it fell to them, if that position was there. So, you know, the line of succession is not just limited to, you know, the people that we see on the balcony. It goes back and back and back. You know, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in the line of succession. Would it ever reach them? No, the crown would, you know, the, the crown is likely to go Prince William, Prince George, if Prince George has, has children, them, and then their children, and then their children. Um, but I still think it's important to have that line of succession enshrined in law if we are going to have a constitutional hereditary monarchy. Now, of course, that's a whole another debate about you know whether we have a monarchy or not. There will always be pro pro monarchy. There will always be anti monarchists, and there's you know, there's always been an anti monarchist um, position there within the United Kingdom, albeit very small. But one thing, going back to the polls, that we, we do know is that consistently the royal family, although having peaks and troughs when it comes to opinion polls of all denominations, consistently remains high. There has been no you know, outpouring of or cries for change when it comes to um, a hereditary constitutional monarchy. I think if that was going to happen, it would have happened with the death of Elizabeth II and the accession of King Charles III and Queen Camilla. That would have been the time where, uh, if there really were anti-monarchy sentiments within the United Kingdom, that is when it would have reared its head and um, there would have been a lot of debate. In truth, in fact, what happened was a very smooth passing over and a very smooth accession uh, for King Charles and Queen Camilla, there was a little whimper, there was a little bit of discussion, but that was actually more to do with the confusion of the palace kind of calling um, Camilla the Queen Consort, rather than just going straight in with Queen. Although I did say in my royal videos at the time that that was because they wanted a period of separation in between the late Queen's passing and of course the coronation. Post-coronation, Camilla was referred to as Queen. Camilla, as she should be, because that was the precedent set by previous queen consorts, uh, of course, that were married to reigning male monarchs. So I don't think there is that level of anti-monarchy sentiment out there that would spark a big debate and indeed a referendum, because I think it would take a referendum to, to do away with the monarchy in general. So I think the monarchy is secure into the future. Um, but I just wanted to kind of discuss, you know, the reasons why we have a constitutional hereditary monarchy and the reasons why we shouldn't, you know, vote people in and out of it. Um, you know, did people, necess did people necessarily want James I, uh, the sixth of Scotland and, of course, the first of England 
to take over from Elizabeth. You know, there would have been uh, people of Catholic sentiment that would have wanted other people on the throne. You don't always get what you want, but at least you know what you're getting with a line of succession. And that is the strength of the continuity that that brings. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media. And of course, do hit that bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me, to you all, and goodbye.